$850 billion is an amount of money far too large to imagine, but it is America's annual bill for diagnosed musculoskeletal disease. The amount includes medical treatment and lost personal wages equaling 7.7% of gross domestic product. Medical costs alone are $510 billion annually. Most recent data collected between 2006 and 2009 indicate that musculoskeletal dysfunction and pain is the number one reason for doctor office visits. It ranks number two behind the common cold for lost activity days and number two for the use of over-the-counter and prescription drugs. The only drugs more frequently prescribed are for control of high blood pressure. According to the same data, every year 48 of every 100 people above the age of 18 self-report musculoskeletal dysfunction and pain as a primary medical condition. It is said that 90% of the solution resides in being able to clearly express the problem in its most elemental terms. During the next 20 minutes, this DVD will provide you direct insight into the root cause of musculoskeletal injuries and what you can do to minimize their impact on your workforce. Musculoskeletal dysfunction does not discriminate by age. Injury rates are slightly higher for the youngest in the workforce and men suffer more injuries than women, mostly because of the nature of work. So, with the naked eye, you can't easily spot who will be more prone to injuries and who will not. Over 50% of all work-related injuries are musculoskeletal in nature. Type of injuries and frequencies vary by industry and occupation, but lower extremity and back injuries are uniformly high across all major industries and occupations. Musculoskeletal injuries are typically blamed on working conditions, especially handling heavy loads, but statistics illustrate a high rate, particularly of back problems, even for workers who generally perform very little or no lifting. Musculoskeletal dysfunction is so widespread that it impacts you regardless of your hiring and safety practices. If you take a closer look at your employees and your future employees, you will find that one in four already has a musculoskeletal disorder that may already or potentially impact their ability to perform their work. It may be dormant at the time of hiring and you won't know about it until it flares up. What may be the bigger surprise so far is that eight of 10 people, regardless of age, are predisposed to musculoskeletal dysfunction. They may be totally asymptomatic, 100% able to perform their work duties for years. Some of them, however, will already have latent problems or will develop latent problems that may be triggered by a lift, two hours of overtime, or simply by turning away from a co-worker to sneeze. A latent musculoskeletal problem is equivalent to a cocked gun on a hair trigger. Even a perfectly organized ergonomic situation is no guarantee, as a perfectly normal motion may trigger the event. The point is that a lot of musculoskeletal injuries that occur on the job are not necessarily job related. Musculoskeletal dysfunction plays a large role in injury accidents because mental distraction and fatigue are root causes of accidents. Even for people with a relatively high pain tolerance, pain and discomfort is a major mental distraction. In addition, pain usually causes musculoskeletal compensation, which typically causes additional musculoskeletal stress, compounding both distraction and fatigue. With a new perspective on the root cause of musculoskeletal dysfunction, you will be able to easily spot people who are predisposed to injure. You intuitively know that good posture is good for ergonomics. The reason is simply that gravity does not represent a big load on your body if you have a good erect posture. As posture deteriorates, the centers of mass shift away from the vertical line so gravity gets more leverage on your body, meaning muscles have to work harder to do nothing but stand upright. Under the burden of anxiety, worry, and fears in daily life, our posture suffers. Even a chill causes us to implode our bodies, and when we do, gravity steps right in to make the situation worse. Whatever the source of poor posture, the result is always the same. 
This picture is entertaining because it carries a grain of truth, but there is nothing funny about the computer posture. No doubt millions of people sitting in front of computers for work and play have been a boon to therapists and chiropractors. Head forward posture presents a huge strain on the body. For every inch the head shifts forward of the spine, it effectively doubles in weight, straining the neck and the shoulders. The collapse of the chest changes breathing, which in turn changes blood chemistry through the carbon dioxide interface, which can not only cause fatigue, but anxiety. The reason musculoskeletal dysfunction often goes from bad to worse is called compensation. Our muscles are essentially organized into two groups according to function. Postural muscles are used to maintain an upright, standing or sitting posture. Postural muscles can exert low forces over long time periods. Phasic muscles can exert extremely high forces, but for a short time only. Mike Bridges here is strong. At 52, he deadlifts over 600 pounds and squats 806 pounds, but don't ask him to hold those weights very long. Phasic or action muscles have low endurance. When it comes to pain, the brain isn't too helpful. It wants instant gratification and will do almost anything to avoid pain with no regard for the long-term consequences. In its quest for instant gratification, the brain will create any number of compensation patterns depending on the source of the discomfort. This is a significantly compensated stance that is very common. Weight shifted to one leg, hyperextended knee, total body asymmetry, unlevel hips and shoulders. This posture typically goes along with forward rotated hips, collapsed chest, and forward head position. It is not work-related, but it predisposes a person to musculoskeletal disorders and possible work-related problems. My body is my castle, the saying goes. All castles, all houses, and all bodies need a sound foundation or they will collapse. Your foundation is your feet. In fact, your body responds more severely to your faltering foundation than does your house to its foundation. First of all, your house isn't moving, and secondly, your house does not have a brain that tries to compensate for the problem. The problem is that over 80% of people do not have a sound, stable foundation. The best way for you to follow this concept is to remove your shoes and socks and look at your feet. Let's take a look at your foundation to see if you are among the 80% who are predisposed to musculoskeletal dysfunction and pain. If the web space between your first and second toe looks deeper, not wider, but deeper than the space between your second and third toe, you have something called Morton's foot syndrome. More specifically, that means that your first metatarsal bone is too short. That in itself is a problem. Dr. Dudley Morton concluded some 80 years ago that people subject to this foot malformation had a different walk. This foot configuration also indicates that you have another problem which actually is the root cause of the majority of musculoskeletal problems. Fortunately, it is also easy to identify by performing a simple exercise that simulates what happens when you walk. The easiest way to do this test is to stand on a hard floor. Stand with your feet comfortably shoulder width apart and make sure your feet are pointing straight forward and that they are parallel. Do a skier's crouch by leaning slightly forward and performing a quarter knee bend while keeping your heels on the ground. Make sure the middle of your knees are right over your third toes. With the knees straight over your feet, your legs and hips are properly aligned. While you stand in the skier's crouch, Move your knees slowly toward each other until you feel weight-bearing pressure on the balls of your feet behind your big toes. Notice where the middle of your knees are now. If your knees are to the inside of your second toes, you are predisposed to musculoskeletal dysfunction. If you move your knees back to the center of your feet again, it will most likely feel like you shifted your weight to the outside of your feet. The left image shows correct knee alignment, 
but the first metatarsals and big toes are not properly weight-bearing. The image on the right illustrates the position of the knees when the first metatarsal and big toes have been made weight-bearing by moving the knees towards the midline. At this point, the body is out of alignment. So you can either try to compensate by walking on the outside of your feet or lose your posture. If we were to use one of those fancy scanners the podiatrists use that coloring codes the pressures underneath your feet, you'd see that the first metatarsals and big toes are not supporting your body. Mr. Big, so to speak, gets away with doing nothing. The biggest toe bone gets away with providing the least support. Not only does that cause the smaller bones to overload, but because this area of the foot provides the brain with the balance signal it needs, the entire body becomes unstable. The major cause of the elevated first metatarsal was first published in 1904, but this important finding received scant attention by medical professionals. Dr. Sewell, based on a sample of over a thousand specimens, discovered a rotation at the head of the talus that can vary from one person to the next by as much as 20 degrees. This rotation causes the entire inside of the foot to lose ground contact unless the arch is allowed to collapse. This is the root cause of the foot imbalance we have already demonstrated. Only one question remains to be answered. Is it possible, in spite of this deformity, to bring the first metatarsal and big toe down to the ground to make the inside of the foot weight-bearing to balance the foot? <laughs>